replace them. I got extras of those. These big stinking honking things. Everybody's waiting on me. Oh yeah, it's my office. <coughs> it's the Corona, which I shouldn't kid about. One of my friends has it. He's in the hospital right now. Where are those bases? Oh my gosh. I miss these bases. Where'd they go? They're probably in my dang other box. Looking garbage. All right. <laughs> Welcome to my show. Just kidding, guys. Um, hey, this is Daniel at Haunted Holler pa Painting, hosted by the Troll Lords. I am here today to show you really cool things with miniatures. And normally we follow a theme every week. And last week we didn't have a show because I was in the preparation of moving and I just got moved and I'm still unpacking so th things are still a bit hectic so today we are doing basing uh, this is something that to me is very important for miniatures uh, to make miniatures look great and to um, it really brings the miniature together sometimes. So we're going to do a few different ways that I would base uh, base bases, per se. Um, and I'll show you a few examples of other stuff that I've created as well. And I'm going to go over some of the materials that we would use to do these bases with. And I'll wait for a few more people to get into the stream. Uh, bake, how many people we got in there right now? What? 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 Oh my gosh, we got a troll in here. Alright, so guys, bases, when it comes to um, models, we have different types of bases. Um, you know, fantasy models, models usually have the bases included in the model, as we see here with her. Um, we also have the model we were working on last time, which I finished. So, um, his base, I haven't done anything to it, but I mean, it looks like he's standing on a bit of stone. What do y'all think of him, by the way? So, all them stitches took me a little bit of time. All them stitches be, oh, sorry. We keep this PG. Okay, so we got different types of bases. Um, if we lived in the UK... Um, we would actually have um, a good material to make bases out of, and that is the two pence piece. Okay, the two pence piece is almost 25 millimeters. It's about the same size as this inspiration coin from uh, Norse Foundry, right here. Um, I won't be using this because this was actually a gift for from the owner. Um, he always sends his stuff there, but I like keeping these around just to remind me that I have people that care about me. Um, so, but yeah, so if you look at this compared to the, this base here, this is a Reaper base, um, that I've used. And so it's about the same size. So in the UK, you have a lot of guys who will build models and they just use these because essentially this is two cent and this base here would run you a lot more because you're getting like a pack of 20 for five dollars so you do the math which is cheaper plus these are heavier so it's going to set down on your table a lot better than that piece of plastic is uh, i'm working to get me a bag of pence pieces because it's just the way to go now, you'll see this base here. Um, it's not painted, and it's all shiny. Um, this is a 
indented base um, from, hopefully, let's see if I get to focus on it, from Reaper. You notice on the bottom, it's got the tracks that you can cut out for uh, the slots for a slotted model. But I just filled those in. Um, essentially, what I did with this was I dropped some super glue on there and put some stone and sand. And what I'll do is when I go to paint the base, I'll paint it all one color. Then I'll paint each section how I want it after I set the model on top of it. Uh, these are for my bolt action um, models. And I've actually created a silicone mold of a few different ones of these. So I can now just make a whole bunch of these out of resin. So I don't really need any more of these types of bases. I just push out as many as I need. And they're all set up just a little bit different. Sorry, I need a drink. Not the type of drink I want tonight, but it's the type of drink I'm drinking. So what we're going to be using for bases tonight, one is we have this piece of, um, I believe this is acrylic. No, wait. I thought it may have been acrylic coated with paper, but no, that is a piece of, um, it's like three mil um, MDF. So this is from a Manic model kit. This is for a model that's laying down holding a rifle. And we also have, these are bigger than standard. These are poker chips. Which, these actually kind of work well now for the new GW models that are bigger than standard. Um, you can pull the sticker off if you want to try. But they're on there pretty good. So, I don't think it's going to come off very well. So, we'll be using a lot of glue tonight anyway, so this, this shouldn't really affect anything. This side might come off even better. Now somebody, oh, there we go. Now somebody's like, oh no, you're destroying this Marvel poker chip that's probably worth some sort of money to somebody. And I literally have a whole bag full of these, so it doesn't really matter. Let's see here. Well, let's see if we can get another one on. Well, hello to you, too. So, let's see if we can get a couple of these cleared off here. I just want to get some of the, the shininess off. Do, 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 do. Don't cut my finger open. So, I'm still unpacking modeling supplies, so I don't have all my stuff handy to me at the moment. So, my wife made sure that my primary job function was putting together furniture and hanging stuff up versus unpacking my office outside of getting my stuff ready for work today. Let's see here. So I've been trying to work on that the best I can. Come on. It is a bit dark. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It is a bit darker here than it is at the old place. Let's see here. I was looking for one type of material that I can't find, and I know I've got it around here somewhere. Where are you at? Uh. Anyway, can't find it. All right. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work with this guy today. So. <clears throat> I want to give him a, a fairly decent bottom, kind of like maybe he's on a flat plateau of rock. So what we're going to do here is I've got cork board, and this is a bit too thick for these smaller bases. So I'm going to take some of this cork board, and I'm going to trace this out a little bit so I know where I'm. At, and I'm not wasting it too much here. And I'm trying not to rush through anything, but I do basing a lot. Basing is actually my favorite part of model making. Um, so, because it really, to me, it just it makes the model so much better when it has a nice looking base on it. Okay, we'll rip that in half. There we go. Now, 
we are going to be using super glue today of the Gorilla Glue variant. And remember, guys and gals, if you have any questions, feel free just to put them in the chat window. And the reason why I'm using super glue right now is because we are going to do so much of this and we got to not hurry, but I want it to at least be dry so we can work with it a little bit. So I'm super gluing down pieces here randomly. And this is actually going to kind of give it a broken ground look. Oh no. And see, here's the problem with M the MDF is it soaks up glue so quite quickly. Now you can go over the edge as well with it, which is kind of cool. All right, come on now. Blue, it's your home. You're gonna stay there forever. Better watch out or my producer will tell me to be quiet. He's got more important things to do than worry about me. So, so does anybody get to play any games this week? Or this past two weeks? I haven't seen you in two weeks, guys. And it's been a little upsetting. Now, I will Friday night be doing a show over at Norse Foundry. Yeah. I'm for sure going to have my show Friday night there. We're painting one of their models. Do, 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 do. And we don't know. Um, also, the owner has a tendency to get in and give away free stuff. So you might be able to get something free. I'm not promising anything because I haven't talked to him. But he has a tendency to have giveaways. So, yeah, it'll be on their channel. Um, <clears throat> if anybody bake wants to pester Chuck, we might see if we can get us a key to, uh, for a giveaway tonight, if possible. If you want to message Chuck, see if that's available. Yeah, he might be free, though. I could try to get a hold of him yesterday. Okay, so this base here, all this cork is stuck to it. It looks kind of weird. Um, we're going to do a few more things to it real quick. So, next thing. Uh, is this wonderful bucket right here of my special sand. I got this at the beach. Anyway. So, I'm going to take some sand, and I'm going to dump it in the middle section here. Hey, what's up, Willie the Rat? Okay, now, there's already a little bit of glue in there, so the sand will stick a little bit, but we don't want it to stick all the way. So, we're going to knock some of this out. Now we've got that's a little bit lower. Now, right now, what I could do is I can drop super glue on top of this base in those crevices. It'll dry almost instantly and um, it'll be hard as a rock. Or you can use Ilmer's glue, PLA or PVA. Um, right, this is an acrylic binder um, with water. Let's see here. It soaks right up into everything. So we're going to go for this right now. Because it also, the cork board will soak it up as well. And the reason I do that is when I go to prime this, it won't soak up as much paint too. Now it wouldn't if I did 
the same did it with the um, the super glue, but this gives me a little bit better of a texture to work with. And we're not done with this, so we're gonna have to let this dry, and it might take a bit for it to dry. And what I'm gonna do after this is around the edges, I'm gonna place stone as well. I've got that fine stone that I had. Um, we're gonna let this dry a little bit, and then we're gonna play around and see what we can do with it. See, I'm starting to make a mess already. I might get the shot back out. Um, remember beforehand, I had the the large stones. This is literally the stuff from where asphalt starts to deteriorate on concrete. And then I also have the stuff I collected from my gutters, which is a finer stone there this is more about the size of a large piece in 28 millimeter about a large piece of gravel like what like what you'd put in your your yard so um we're going to be working a little bit we're not going to be painting miniatures per se today but i've got this uh british infantry men right here and we're going to mount him and we're going to give him a decent looking base tonight. And maybe if we have time, put on a base coat. So, <clears throat> this goes back to Wargaming. Normally these guys would be lined up on sections of board. And I have some around here and I don't know where they went. Hold on, I'm looking for this one more time. Yeah, it's bolt action. Um, where did that get to? This is really getting on my nerves because I just had them. Smaller bases and I had some square bases, or not square bases, but rectangle bases for multiple. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to clip, I can clip what he's got off or I can glue it down. Either way, it doesn't matter, but it's going to look better to me if I clip it off. And some people be like, no, why are you doing this, Daniel? You're making it look horrible. Okay. This is what we need to do, 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 do. Alright. And we want to get to the shape of his foot as possible. And there's a reason for this because this will actually lift the model up a little bit taller than what it is. Okay. So, we are going to put it on this guy right here. So, let's make sure he sits even. And he does. We're going to use a little bit of sand for him starting out. Glue. I need that. Yeah. Put it on the bottom of his feet. So... We know exactly where he is. Now, while we're doing this, we come in with our sand. And we knock this around the bottom of his feet. This is going to do two things. One, it's going to accelerate the glue. Or it should. And then it's also going to bind around the bottom of the feet. So we're going to give it a second to set. So 
So what are y'all playing this week? Oh. Bake announced the Traveler campaign. Now we're going to dump the sand back off the... Po ah! He didn't sit. Oh, mother. Let's try a little bit more glue. Uh, the giant mecha robot says the battle tip. Yes, baking soda is another thing, and I've got some of that too. Pete. Sweet. I am starting up a CNC campaign this month, and I will have it opened up on Facebook soon. Anybody wants to play? I'm the worst, which means I usually kill you. Okay, so he's on here. He's got sand around the bottom of his feet, which is kind of what we want. Okay, now, I kind of imagine him fighting at a more of a, a large farm in Virginia. And that um, he's standing on the edge of a gravel road. So what we're going to do next... What we're going to do next is we're going to add some stones. And we're going to do some large stones. And we're going to do the small stones. So we're going to do the small stones. Actually, we're going to do the large ones first. So what we'll do is we'll just place a couple of large stones. And those are going to be... In the grassy areas. I'm going to put about four. Yeah, I know. They're circular around him, but we don't know what the rest of it looks like. Now, I like to use tweezers for this. Because sometimes I mess things up. So, we're going to do a big stone here. Okay. And then another stone. Right here. And he's got enough room. I'm going to slide another stone in right with it. Okay. And then a big one right here. A couple little smaller, large ones. Has anybody seen Hamilton yet? It's actually really good. It's somewhat accurate, is what I'm getting at. <laughs> Except for all the wrapping. We know that the style of wrapping they used back then was more related to Wu-Tang. I get some laughs out of that. Okay, now what we're going to do next is we're going to add the gravel stones in front front of him like again like he is standing at a on a road so it's gonna take a bit of glue and yeah I do go through glue and I still got some undried accelerant so it might set this off so I'm gonna use something to move this glue around with here okay And then the next thing I do is I just take this guy right here and shove him down in here. And I get some around the other edges of the stones as well. So see now we're building up the, the gravel in front of him. I didn't say it was going to be small gravel. Let's see here. Okay, and then what we would do here, this is where I would prime the model. And, oh, I almost like pretended the lid was on that and I was going to throw it in the floor. Oh, wow, would have killed me. Okay, so we're going to let him dry for a minute. 
we're going to talk about a few other basing materials. You all have seen me in the past use the sand mixture with the the paint. Um, I'm not going to show that off today. Um, I don't have... I still can't find that little bottle of resin, and my local shop is currently closed due to one of the co-workers there got the COVIDs. And uh, I was going to show you all the crushed glass today, but I can't because I can't find that bottle of resin. And I can't, sorry, I had to say it like that. And not having that bottle keeps me from showing you how to use this. Let me look for it one more time real quick. It's not in this container. This is when we go through all the paints, guys, because it's in a paint bottle. Okay. These are all Army Painter bottles, so I know it is not one of these. And I'd be surprised if I found it in this box. It'd be like, oh my gosh, it was a miracle. Uh, this is all set it up. And the last, but not least, box of mixed items. I found it as long as it hasn't gone off yet that's so weird because it wasn't there last time I used it okay this is where it gets scary so I'm gonna need a lid or something uh, to do this on let me grab a sheet of paper. The reason why this is going to get scary is this is literal crushed glass. And I don't want it in my eyes. I don't want it on my hands. It's just a lot of a mess. So, let me get prepped for that real quick. Let's see here. First thing we're going to do. Where's my guess? So, there it is. Okay. We're going to paint this. Uh, I'm going to leave the center of this the color it is. And I'm going to use one of these as my paint palette. This is how I roll, folks. <laughs> Had to find me a brush. I'm just going to throw a layer of gesso on here on the edge and a primer. So I know where I'm working. I hear my dog barking. Let's let that sit for just a second while we do. And 
Yeah, he went like that. That's my buddy Zach. Okay. Zach! Ah! Okay, so I am going to use some stones because this looks really cool with rocks. Here. Let that sit for a second. While that sets, because I need to put some more gesso down, I'm going to put some gesso on this guy right here. Ah, the glue has it all the way set. Stinking super glue. It's like the worst. That's why you have this stuff. It's Instaset, aka we used to call this stuff Zip Kicker back in the day. Yeah, it's actually a name brand of it, but it's it's a super glue, super glue accelerant. It will set the stuff. It it causes a chemical reaction with the super glue, and causes it to set off in like seconds compared to a few minutes. Um, I will tell you, uh, interesting fact about super glue was it was invented in my hometown, Kingsport, where I live now, quite by accident. Um, I think they were trying to make a, a, um, liquid plastic, because that's what it was being developed at, was a plastics company. Um... The company I work for now was a branch of that company that came out of World War II. Um, but the, uh, it was, they had developed the chemical and they were looking at it under an electron microscope and they ruined it because they didn't realize it was going to fuse the lens or the glass that they had it on to the microscope's um, lens. And this was back in the 60s when electron microscopes were a lot more pricier than they are today. So, so yeah, see here. Let's just do it all. Now, I'm not going to paint these rocks because they're a decent color to begin with. But we'll get everything else. So, crushed glass is great for making what looks like um slushed um slush snow so let's get let's see if I can go ahead and get this gesso on here gosh darn it it still didn't sit that stupid it's just gonna have to work Zip kicker is supposed to dry out really quick. Get on there, I guess so. I don't want to have to bust out the airbrush. Yeah, I have to get a hood for where I'm at now. Because we have carpet in our closet. And I'm not going to be able to airbrush under my desk anymore. That plus uh, not a lot of ventilation in here because I'm on the in the basement compared to I was on the second floor last time. This guess is not one to cooperate today, and I guess it's a mixture of all the chemicals that I've placed on here. But I just want to get the stones colored in. I'm gonna let that dry out. Okay, now let's go back over here to this guy. Okay, it's starting to set a little bit. So now we can come back with the glue on it. We will be using super glue around the edges. This. So we're going to do like this. I'm going to put the glue in right here and then just shove it in. See what I did there? So put the glue in right here, shove it in. 
what this is doing is kind of giving it an effect of rock breaking away. Now I am going to leave some edges with no glue on it. Like over here where I'll put some right around this edge here. But I want to show you what all we can do with this type of cork when we get it painted. Okay. And that should do it. Should be good right there. Let's see where we're at now. Okay. So we're gonna let that dry as well. I mean the reason why this is so fun is just I mean for me it's just like you I get to go outside and look at stuff and see things I'm like, oh I think I can redo that. Um, you know, I like to get shell, which is, um, the S H A L E. Um, and cause we have a lot here. Um, cause we all, you know, in the Appalachians and riverbanks and stuff like that. So I usually find a big piece of it and then I bring it home and then I just drop it and it shatters in thin little slivers and I get all that and I wash it off and let it dry. And you can use that to build up like you know, ridge faces and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. I have a bag of it somewhere and I can't find it. So, of course, it's all about the move. Okay, so this right here is mostly dry. So, I am going to take the paper. I am going to fold the edges up of the paper. And make a bowl out of the paper. One to kind of collect this because this stuff's expensive. It's ten dollars for that small container, which to me is expensive. So, what we're going to do is I want to take some of this resin. This is Secret Weapon Scenic's Realistic Water. You're not supposed to shake it. It takes about 24 hours to cure. So I'm going to place it around the stone like this. Okay. Now I'm going to take this, which is crushed glass. Um... Hmm, I should be wearing a dust mask. Things I do for you guys. Here we go. This is the NSH approved dust mask right here. And you sprinkle it on. And the thicker you go, the wider it gets at the top. And you'll start to see it as I start putting it in. build it up base a little bit more. Take this rock. Water face right there. Spread that out some. So you see how it soaks up in there? Kind of like it looks like slushed snow. That's the effect we're going for. Okay. 
Try a capillary action to it. This is a set of tweezers, by the way, with the ink cap on it. Okay. Cut a little bit more. I'm going to build this up a lot more. And depending on what color you make the base, it can kind of comes through. So, so I'm gonna kind of make a snowdrift, or a snowdrift, but I'm gonna make it higher in the middle. Starting out, okay, and I'll put it all over everything else. Okay, and once that dries, I'll brush off all the excess. But you see in the center there, um, let me see if I can get a better picture of it. This is the first time I've used this stuff in two years now. But if you look at it, you've got the look of slushy stone. It looks really good when I use it with a slate, but I don't have any, or shell, but I don't have any of that right now. So I use this on my Space Wolves. And I also use baking soda, which we're going to talk about next. Okay, so I'm going to set this over here, way out of my reach. So I forget. I don't want to hear it. Okay, now I'm going to take this right here, pour any excess back in the container. Okay. I'm going to fold it inwards. I am dead serious about this stuff. This is why I haven't really used it in a long time. I still got some on my desk. Okay. Give me just a second, guys. I am going to slip away here. I am going to go get a wet cloth so I can wipe this stuff up. Real quick. Bake, if you can entertain our good people in chat. I'll be right back, guys.
I'm back. Okay. Let's see here. Let me get up what I can. I know most of this is sand. I just don't want to have to deal with crushed glass. Always keep your work area clean. Anything happening in chat, bake? You're shaking it. Oh, okay. You guys are weird. Okay, I'm gonna get a drink of my wonderful lemon lime Gatorade. Best flavor ever. First flavor ever. Glorious. Okay, what are we doing next? I need. Gosh, I didn't want to paint. But I guess this is a painting show. And that's what you guys are here for. Who am I kidding? We're basing, we're not using real paint. And yes, I want to show you the miracle that is a wet palette. Because I have not changed the paper in this since the last time we met. Okay. Two weeks ago, you see what is wet? That is still wet. I want y'all to think about that for a minute. Bunch of lazy bastards like I am. And cheat at that. You don't have to pay tons of money because you can just reuse paint. Like I'm getting ready to do right now. So, so we got this base right here. So we'll take this wonderful paint that I have right here. That's two weeks out of the pot. It might even be gesso. I'm not sure. And we're going to paint our cork. And mainly just the cork. And the rock. But we're not going to paint the, the sand yet. But how can Daniel do this? He has not used this in two weeks. Just that's how good I am, guys. That's the miracle of the wet palette. Now, would you all like to learn how to make an easy wet palette? Is that from you or from everybody in there? Well, a wet palette, Tupperware dish, wide and thin. Folded piece of of um, paper towel, folded twice to fit the tray, and then you cut a sheet of baking paper the same size of the tray, and then you just dampen the paper towel and lay that on there, and that's it. And then you just pop the lid back on the pop the lid back onto the the Tupperware container and you're ready to go. That's it. And I paid $25 for one. Okay. Do you know why GW sells paper pallets instead of wet pallets, people? I'll let you think about that for a minute. Type your questions or your answers in the, the chat box. Of Do you know why GW sells paper pallets and not wet pallets? You might not win something. Well, 
Well, yeah, they can sell papers. But that's not the answer I'm looking for. You're on to something. My chair won't quit making noises. It worked because my baking soda go. Oh my gosh. I have lost everything today. I do not have my baking soda. I don't want to have to go out and get new baking soda. This makes me sad, guys. Alright, we're going to let this dry real quick. This is getting dry right here. Um, let's make another base. I've got regular a regular quart. Um, you can buy a bag of these for five bucks. Joann's or Hobby Lobby. So, and I'm not strong enough to break this up myself without the use of technology. Because I'm weak. So I need now super glue. Always with the super glue. Okay, court. Here we go. Okay, random pattern on the on here. So let me get this started. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start chewing cork up on top of here. If I can do this. And it doesn't seem that I can do this by hand. Probably easier if I use the cork board. Because that's actually not put together as hard. That's what she said. My that's what she said. It's never turned out right. Okay. Now cork makes a really interesting... You can make rock with it. You can do dirt. I had a blender down here. I'd blend up some of it. Stress. Come on. Soak that glue up. And we're kind of doing what we did earlier with smaller pieces of cork versus larger pieces. Now what we'll do is we're going to again a lot of this is not experimentation but kind of experimentation. So we're going to dump sand on it. Okay. Okay. Sand in there. Just give it a minute. It'll dry. Okay. Let's see where this base is here. All right, so it's this is mostly dry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with a gray. Oh look, I happen to have a gray called graphite right here. And it's a craft paint. Okay. So we're gonna come in here with the gray and we're gonna paint all the rock. And I will paint all the rock the same color. It's just how I am. Because it's also mixing around with a little bit of that black. Because it's not all the way dry yet. Yeah, 
piece of that glue didn't kick off right. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry. So it's important at this stage we do let this dry. So we're gonna let all this dry real quick. I know it looks like a mess, doesn't it? But you'll see where I'm going at with this. Remember that quote from my wife, don't show me until you're done because it looks like utter trash. So that's my wife for you guys. Okay, now this next stuff is secret juju. I don't know if you've ever heard of flocking. Raise your hand if you have heard of flock. F-L-O-C-K. I know where some of y'all's minds went. So this is flock right here. This is called sawdust flock. I have two different colors right here. I actually have three if I want to reach down and grab another one. Okay, I made this myself. How do you do it? Simple. Find a woodworker. You go, hey, Mr. Woodworker, can I have a bag of sawdust? Literally, that's all this is, is sawdust. Okay. You take the sawdust and you get a sieve. You can buy a sieve. If you don't know what a sieve is, it is the wire basket that your grandmother used to sift flour through to make biscuits. If your grandmother never made biscuits, I'm sorry that you're a northerner. Life will be okay. You can still get biscuits. Um, but So you, you rub the sawdust through the sieve. Take out all the big bits of sawdust. Get a really fine, this is what I mean by fine. You saw how fine that was. A bit of sawdust. Then you take your paint. You get cheap craft acrylic paint. If you use anything else, you're dumb and I'm not going to be your friend anymore. But you take a, uh, you take this craft paint and you mix it with water. And you just dump it in on top of your your material until it gets soaked. Because this is going to soak that water up really quick. And when it does, it's going to soak the paint up. That's why you have to pre-mix it. And you stir and stir and stir until it all gets soaked up and dry. And it's going to look horrible. And then you're going to take an old baking dish. I have, or not dish, but pan. I have a old messed up pizza pan. And I just spread it on there. And I stick it in the oven at 200 degrees and let it set for about an hour. And then when I get it out, it's one solid chunk because all that stuff dried together and then you're going to take and break every bit of it apart now if you're doing it in small batches this is not worth your time but if you're doing it in large batches like i do i do at least a gallon at a time it, it saves you money and this is the this is the large flock that we use uh, when we're building huge pieces of terrain to cover your gaming boards, this is the cheap stuff. This is, they spray PVA glue down, and you put this stuff down, and it just soaks up the glue. And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to take some of this binder that I have that we had out a minute ago, and we're going to put it in here. And I'm leaving the... The rocks, they're not the rocks, but we're going to use it as maybe clumps of dirt today. We're going to leave that in there. And we're and this is actually the reason why we're waiting for the other miniature to dry. Um, but we're going to take some of this yellow right here. This is going to be messy, but I'm just going to drop it in there. And it's literally going to soak up every bit of that binder. Okay, and then come up over here and give it a second, dump off the excess. Flick it a few times. And we have 
another base. Now, if we if we coated that, now you're going to see what I do with this. I'm not done with that yet. All right, let me get this up here. Get it out of the way. So we're going to take a bigger brush here. We're going to move it off the tops of my cork here. Now, I'm just making bases right now. Normally, I'd be doing this around the feet of something or having something on a pedestal, but I'm just showing you how all this works. So now we're going to let this dry, and when it dries, you'll actually see the colors change a little bit in here. So, so that's what we're going to do here is we're going to take this, once this paint dries here, all this area that doesn't have rock is going to get coated in glue, and it's going to have this stuff dumped on it. It's going to look like grass, like one foot's in the grass and the other foot is on stone. Then we're going to clean up the base. We'll end up doing a wash and a dry brush over the stone as well. We'll probably do the wash and dry brush first and then do everything else. And it's going to look a lot different than what it looks like now. Because right now it does look like hot garbage until that dries, that thick craft paint dries. So we're going to try another one like this again. So what we'll do here is we're just going to use straight... You straight material. I'm actually going to do this over there. I really don't have to pick all this up again. Okay, hold it as flat as possible. You see how, it, here we go. It soaks it up really quick. And you can do multiple layers as well. Let's see. Now, it's showing the metal through because we ha we didn't paint this at all. Um, so, that that's just another way to do a base. Um, we usually use this over larger areas. I'm going to show you another cool one. This is a very old school way of doing a base as well. And this is the simplest base that you can get just by not painting your base and this is how a lot of old school war gamers did it put your glue down of course they weren't using this okay we're going to spread it out with my handy dandy set of tweezers we don't want a lot of thick glue here so we're Trying to spread a little bit out over a large area. So, how's COVID affected your all's areas? Uh, I will tell you, in our area, my kids don't start back to school till next week instead of this week. And, it's all virtual for the first month. I'm going insane. It's not good for an introvert like me. Sorry, I keep bumping that camera, guys. Okay, so we're putting in... Sorry, I'm, I'm not sprinkling a lot on here, okay? You can even... I mean, it doesn't even look like I've got a full coverage here, okay? This is just sand. This is how a lot of old gamers did it back in the day. Okay, we've got a very thin layer of sand on here. You'll see what I do with that when I paint it here in just a second. So first I'm going to put a little bit of zip kicker on it. So it cures a little bit faster. And hopefully we'll get this dry base. Let's 
can see how much that one drop of zit kicker just went across that. Anybody watch the new Transformers on Netflix yet? Yeah, the anime one, it's amazing. It goes into the whole story about why the Decepticons were the way they were. It almost makes you feel sorry for them. I am blowing. Hey, did I got a bald spot? Look at that, guys. I'm bald. My kids like to point that out. All right. Yeah, I know. Okay, so this is still drying, but what we're going to do now is we're going to take a different color. Let's see here different green and we're going to wet it in just random spots okay and then we're going to put some of this other green on here okay pat it down just a little bit So it creates two different colors going on. Stuff up. I'm gonna have to deal with this all day at work tomorrow. And I'll probably end up having to vacuum. Uh, okay. So we now have a two tone look going on now. Normally, again, the base would have been painted beforehand. I didn't have the forethought to do that, guys, because it's been crazy here. Let's see here. All right. Let's see. It's getting there. I almost want to go get the hair dryer. But y'all wouldn't like that. Dry. Dang it. I'm trying to think of some other bases to do. Okay, so here we go. This is painted black. We've got our gray over here. All right, we'll take a dry brush. Get a little bit of this gray here. We'll start bringing it over here. Oh, it's got that crap on it. Hold on. Our wet dry brush. We'll start building this up some here. Now you can take instant coffee, right, and mix it with paint. Um, the actual coffee grounds, the instant coffee crystals, like powder it up even more and mix it with your paint. And when you paint a thin layer on a base, it crackles when it dries. I think you can buy paint like that from GW for an ounce for $8. Okay. Oh no, Pete, don't leave us. I know I'm boring you to death tonight. Do you want to post the links, my good sir? Okay, now see, here's the sides where we didn't do a lot of... Well, we did do some stone here. But what we're going to do is it's going to add extra texture here. So uh, as you'll notice that there are some links that are being posted in the uh, chat window. One of those links is the Facebook page where 
Uh, I will alert you when we are going live, and sometimes I will alert you on what we're painting today and what techniques we are doing. I didn't do that today because I was a bit busy today. First day back in work in five days. And uh, let's see here. Then also there is uh, another link, and it's to my Patreon. Now, I'm not trying to make a living here. I'm just trying to keep myself in supplies so I don't have to spend an arm and a leg to get different things to teach you all stuff. I have three different levels of Patreon. I have the basic, I think that's three dollars, and that just gets you access into the 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 uh, chat or not chat but our Discord where you can actually talk to me while I paint. Okay guys? Uh, this is I keep I'm logged in it right now. You can come in here, it'll automatically add you um, and you can have discussions with me as uh, as we paint and uh, ask me questions so you don't have to top them into the, the window and just have a great time chit-chatting with me. And then um, we can also, uh, the next tier up gets you access to any early recipes. I think that's $5. So if I come up with a new custom recipe for a hobby hack, I will post it the day before so you can... Go out there and get your, your supplies and mix it with me as well. And then um, there is a $30 tier, and that's my insane tier pretty much, uh, which gives you all the previous before, uh, plus the ability to get my attention for one hour um, a month. Uh, and that would be me sitting down with you one-on-one, -on -one talking about painting, discussing how, we are going, how you're painting something, giving you tips or tricks. Or you can send me your model. Um, uh, a model of about this size and I will paint it for you for that one model a month so um, postage not included but that uh, is the $30 tier and uh, sign up for it if you like um, you don't have to I will always have all my stuff on here and uh, the, the only thing that uh, you won't be able to do is get into the discord channel so Okay, so we did the first bit of that. Now we're going to add some color to it. So we're going to add a little white. Uh, let's see here. Actually, no. Do some earth brown first. Okay. It, oops, it's a bit of brown. So I'm going to take the brown and I'm going to stipple it in here in the, this area a little bit just to get some of the brown in the recesses here. And I'm going somewhere with this, so don't leave me yet, guys. I can't go buy any new models right now, people, because the comic shop's closed. I like to see my models before I buy them. Stupid COVID. Oh, y'all ain't seeing what I'm doing. Somebody's more interested in his dinner than helping me out. Just kidding, man. I never heard anybody talk about Taco Bell like that. I'm a I'm a bean burrito friend myself. I always get the I no listen. I get the bean burrito. Add sour cream and add nacho cheese. Okay, we're going to let this dry for a minute, then we're going to clean this back up. Um, actually, let's smear this out a little bit here. We want a little bit of brown in our gray, because rock sink straight up gray. Okay, we're going to let that dry. See where we're at here. So this is what I would normally do at this point um, on this right here is I would take my glue mixture and I would drip, 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 drip it on here. And 
and let it dry. And that will lock the lock it in so it won't fall off as easy. So we're gonna let that dry. Our other project over here didn't turn out very well, so I'm hiding it behind the paint. So um we're gonna take this now. This is our old school base, okay? This is how old school painters did it. So we're gonna get our primer. I'm actually gonna use out hit the mic stand with my head again. I'm not going to use gesso. I'm actually using black paint. Okay. Because it will dry a little bit faster than the gesso will. Okay. So, we're going to first edge it. But the only problem is this stuff will rub off a lot easier, too. Dry, dry, dry. The command it be dry. I also have uh, two face groups I help moderate. Facebook groups I help moderate, guys. Uh, we're getting ready to start a big RPG push. Uh, first one is Game Church City, and the other one's called the Tavern. Um, there's two groups, or both gaming groups. Game Church City is focused around video games, and the Tavern's focused around board games, tabletop, and they're working together, and we're getting ready to do a big online RPG push. Um, we know that COVID's actually getting ready to pick back up. We don't know this, but we assume it's getting ready to pick back up. And so, like, we want to be prepared to run games for people online because they can't get to their comic shops. So, um, we're going to be doing that for free for people, uh, hopefully via Fantasy Grounds. I've been talking to them a little bit to see about getting some comp counts for, uh, for our people. Um, if not, we'll probably have them on Roll20. Uh, but we're not going to go straight up for the big, the big two. Uh, if, if our D GMs want to run 5th edition, that's fine. If they want to run Pathfinder, that's fine. Or Starfinder, that's okay. We are pushing... This is what we're pushing. We're pushing Castles and Crusades. Not because we are, I'm affiliated with them. Just the fact that it's a good system. It's still free at the moment in PDF form. Uh, in Monsters and Treasures, I don't know if that's changed. Those two, I haven't checked them this week. But last week, they were still listed both as free in PDF. You all don't realize how awesome that is. Because you can play this game for free. Um, you've got, uh, also for free, um, I'm pushing sword, uh, Swords and Wizardry from Troll Lord Ga or Frog God Games. Um, it's free in PDF form right now, okay? Um, it's a BX clone. There's another BX clone called White Box Adventures, okay? It's free in PDF at the moment. The actual physical book is $5 on Amazon, um... I mean, it's it's a it's a BX clone of original Dungeons and Dragons, along with Swords and Wizardry, and the Swords and Wizardry stuff will work with White Box Adventures as well. Um, so we're going to be pushing the little companies. Uh, anything that you want to run, it's little. And I don't mean that these companies are little. I mean it's just like they don't have the presence of. Is it Pezo, Pazo, and Watsy? But, like, we're wanting to let people know that there's other RPGs out there, and you can get them for free. And I've, you know, we're going to push some Dungeon Crawl Classics. We're going to push Mutant Crawl Classics, things like that. Um, you know, I, I really enjoy running Mutant Crawl Classics. Or not Mutant, but Dungeon Crawl Classics. It's uh, fun, one-shot stuff. But, as I said, I'm starting a long-term Castles and Crusades. 
uh, we'll probably start out and aired um, first module rising night uh, for um, hoping to get a lot of new pe players that have never played before. Uh, even if you have played before, if you want to get in and play with me, just let me know. Um, it's going to be on Fantasy Grounds. The um, and what we're as as far as this, uh, the we're, I'm going to try to go through the A series modules and get everybody acclimated to the uh, to the game. And before I start going off on any side trails. Yeah, yeah, and a world anvil. I could we could use that as well. I I have a world anvil account. I help set up all that stuff for fantasy or for troll lord, and uh, I have access to that as well. So um, you can get on the world anvil and set up a subscription for that and get access to it. And it's really cool. It's kind of like the D and D Beyond for non D and D. RPG systems, so there's a lot of other RPG systems out there on it, stuff like that. But I'm not gonna, you know, fault 5e for what it is. It's just the sign of our times. I mean, it is 2020. Oh wait, so it's a Patreon through World Anvil, or just a subscription? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, all right. So you pledge through Patreon, you get access to the World Anvil stuff. But I think you still have to have a subscription through World Anvil for storage. So it's kind of like Roll Twenty is for that. Um, so, but the, all the World of Aired stuff is in there. Um, you know, I did all the stuff for the. Um, what is that? The money system, the monetary system. Crap. Anyway, uh, for aired, and that's how I say it. I don't care how you say it. That's how I say it. It's the right way to say it. Um, okay. Now I've got this here. I'm gonna take the brown and the gray, and I'm gonna mix it together. I want more gray than brown though. Okay. Then we're gonna come in here. On the top and we it's okay that this is still wet because this is going to add streaks into the rock or we'll make it like stone and okay you know how layers of stone are they have streaks in them Just doing the top part here. Get this freaking thing out of my way. And get the wonderful white from Apple Barrel. We're scraping the bottom of the barrel tonight, guys. Ha ha! Ha ha! Ha ha! So, I was telling my kids, I was like, guys, you know, I love jokes about elevators. And they're like, why is that, Dad? I'm like, because they're great on so many levels. Okay, so we've got our streaks going on here. So let's do this right here. I heard some off-color jokes I'm not going to tell either, but they're bad. I didn't laugh. Or did I? I never know. So, should I shave my head? How about this? If I get one $30 Patreon person or five... $5 Patreon subscribers, I will shave all this off. I will take it slick and keep it slick for the next show. Just saying. But you have to subscribe within the next 24 hours. 
So you're like, you like how I did that, guys? That's how you, that's how you do it. So we're going to let this dry a little bit more. Okay. This is still drying. And gosh, this thing will never dry over here. We might be able to get it, though. So let's do this. I'll take my dry brush. Get a little bit of this paint here. This white. Let's see if we can... A little bit of dry brush on these rocks. A texture. Yeah, see, that's not dry right there. Or stipple too. Stippling's a good thing that you need to learn. Uh, hold on, I'll show you to you here real quick. Let me. Uh, stippling, you want to take a, a large brush that's really hard bristled. Let me rinse this out. Alright, this is, nope, other dry brush. It's soaking wet. Alright, so this right here is a very stiff brush. So, what you do, stippling, I love it. Let's take some of this white, we're going to put it in the brush. And we're going to come in here. This is also a way to create um, rust. You can do rust with this. Uh, you can use foam brushes for that. Rip a piece of that foam brush. And do impact chip damage. Okay. All right, let's let that dry a little bit longer. All right. How wet is that? It's still too wet. I got the 20, 32 minute mark. Okay. So, yeah, it's still too wet. All right, let's see where we're at here. We might be able to get this to pull this off. All right. So we're going to take our magic magic juice. <gasps> I already messed up. Hold on. Because I don't want it on the edge of the base. As much as I can get it. Oh, we're going to let this flow for just a second in all the crevices that it needs to flow in. Okay. Uh, is Zach still in the, the chat there? The Mythic Man? Ah, dang it. I was going to have him. He's got a woodworking company he does. He makes really cool signs. And dice trays. He makes dice trays out of solid pieces of wood. So, like, if you drop it, it's not going to break. So, let's see here. What do we do with this? Yep. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start dropping this right here. Get a little bit. I don't want too much buildup. I want it to look like kind of almost like a manicured lawn. Ah, no, my brush got in the way of this other one. No, while well, it's drying. Push some of this underneath him. I can't drop it right underneath him. And
And yes, I know this does kind of look like weed after you take it out of your grinder. People, you get your minds out of the gutters. some of this off these rocks here. My teenage daughter points out to me that she is going to move to Colorado one day. I was like, oh, that's what you want to do. It's like, uh, sorry, I can't buy... 30 round magazines there anymore. Sorry. I am a firearm enthusiast. I do like to shoot things and blow crap up. Okay. So, we're going to let this dry for a minute. Let's see where we're at here. Come on, dry. All right, so the color I need for this is one of my favorite colors of all time. Where you at? 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 Oh, there you are. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. You know it. I love this color. Can anybody guess what this color is? If you can guess what this color is, I will send you a model. Actually... You, you 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 got to the count of ten for this color. If you can guess favorite color, if you can guess what this color is in my hand right here, by the count of ten, somebody gives me types it has to be typed into the chat window. I will paint a model for you. You send it to me, I will paint it. If you can guess what color this is, I'm gonna count to ten. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Was there anything in there? None? Oh my gosh. Here it is. Moot Green. Moot Green from Citadel. So let's uh, let hit the... We'll shake it up here real quick. No, no, it's Moot Green. Moot Green's one of my favorites. Along with Amethyst. Right. So here we go. I'll show you what, look how bright this is. It's like nuclear green. Okay, so we're gonna take this, as long as this, yeah. yeah okay, so we're gonna take this right here. We're going to have to do two coats, though. I will tell you that. We're only trying to get this onto the um, sand. So this is what these guys do. Is they'll take and they'll put down sand, let it dry, paint it green. And once it's painted all the way and it dries, then they'll wash it in a, a brown wash or a green wash and that's how they make the grass especially oh my gosh so this is a like a requirement so if you if you notice if you look at the top of this the way it's textured i'm gonna actually just drop it straight on the base because i'm gonna need a bit of it if you look at the way this is textured this actually looks like the top of a citadel base because the citadel bases have texture on them already now but back in the day, your bases didn't have texture. So this is how you had to do this. So that's why you have texture now on Citadel bases. And see that back, black hasn't dried all the way yet. So it's coming through. So it's all right, though. But y'all get the general idea. Um, it'll dry. Come on, dry. I'll have to post pictures of these bases when we're done. But you see how it's coming out like that. Uh, that'd be the first coat. It's that black mixing with it. But you get the general idea. So that's why a lot of your, your stuff has textures now. So you can take a Citadel base 
This is really cool. And you can take um, a file, like an edge file, a needle file. Let's see here. I got one right here. Uh, you can get this set of files. Uh, on These are needle files right here. Um, you can get this set on eBay for like $2 from China if you're patient. So people will take this file here. It's a triangle file. Okay. So, and I'll show you what it does. But imagine taking a Citadel base, the, the, the flat base, they're textured. Okay. And you take, take, take it like this. Let's see if I can get it started here. And cut a line. Or you, it's not working for me right now because this is. So, what you do is do this. You can cut a line with that. Some people do it that way. Some people do it this way as well. Hold on. Now, this tool here, I'm showing you some tools I've not showed y'all before. It's called a, ra uh, um, a razor, uh, razor saw. Okay. So, it's got these little fine saw blades here. I might be able to do it better with this. I've seen people do it either way, but. So we're gonna take this. This is what um, if you're if you're doing big models and you've got really thick sprues, instead of clipping them off, this is the tool you want to use. Um, so let's see if I can get this off. So you unscrew this here, and it pulls that back there, and you slide this in right so, and you screw this back in. This was like four dollars on eBay so I'll show you but you can cut lines into bases this way and make it look like concrete slabs I'll show you how quick this cuts though this is crazy well if it would stay in hold on I feel like an ink and poop It'll, it'll make short work of sprues. Um, but see how far it's going in right there? So it's not like a knife. You can do more... You're not chiseling things away with this. So you can do kind of more precise cuts with it. A lot of people will use this to saw arms off and reattach stuff. Whenever you see a lot of people doing uh, kit bashing, they use these to kit bash with. These are what they use to cut stuff up with. But yeah, and it comes with different blades. You've got a thin blade like this. Of course, the one that looked like a cleaver, like I just used there. And this guy right here. A question? Somebody posted a question? Oh, it's from you. Yeah, so the question. So this is the glue I use. This is he's talking about filling in gaps on glued parts. So this is to me a thin set glue. Um, this right here is pretty much kind of like acetone. It's cement, so it actually melts the plastic together. So I cut up. It's it's clear when you buy it. You can see how gray it is. Because I've cut up, I just cut up pieces of sprue and throw it in here. Yeah. And it's, it's what I use. And I have like a marble in there so I could shake it up. And you see it settles at the bottom. No. It stays melty. Okay, so that's still drying. Okay, going back to this guy here. Okay. <gasps> Look where we're at. So we're gonna take our dry brush. Alright, so we're gonna take our dry brush and we're going to add some white. This is the 
part where it scares you because we're going so bright. But look how. So we're going to go around the edges like this. Ah, when you drop your paintbrush. My wife always wonders, why do your pants have stains on them? Well, honey, I have to dry my brush somewhere. Secret weapon pigments, dark earth. Look at this. Looks like dirt, don't it? So, take a little bit of this stuff right here. Pack it down in the cracks. This is a pigment, so it's just pretty much paint. You don't have to use this stuff. This is the same as like to me as weathering powders or Vallejo's weathering powders. Vallejo, this is what's so funny, is they sell um, these things that look like makeup pads that girls would put blush on with. But it's literally just it it it's it's blush with no mica powder in it like browns and stuff and they call it weathering powders okay so we've got this here now this will dry chalky but what we're going to do is we've got to maneuver it we're not maneuver it we're going to wet it and that'll Dissolve it out a little bit. So we take our paintbrush, dip it in our dirty paint water. We try to get water in there without having to smear the stuff around. Come on. And what that does is it kind of locks it in place a little bit. You know, we're going to put clear coat over all this anyway. Now. So... We're almost done with that. So the next thing I would do, if I'm getting fancy, I gotta get fancy. So this right here. These are called tufts, static grass tufts. Okay, these are these are made with a static grass applicator onto paper. And it literally looks like tufts of grass. Now, I tried to make some at one point a long time ago. And this is what I came up with. Because I had a bright green static grass. I made these little fellers here. And it works for 40k. Because, you know, alien. So, um, alien worlds. So, what we'll do is these are, I think these are self-adhesive. So, my throat hurts. I feel like I got glass in my throat. It's all y'all's faults. 
for me not wearing. Okay, so we pull these off. A pair of tweezers. Okay. And then we just stick them to the base. And a base this big, we'd use a lot. Okay. We'd use the smaller ones. Another one. There. This is called uh, Deadland Tufts from Army Painter. Now, so this one doesn't want to stick, which is fine. We'll make it stick. Okay, so we'll put it in place. So we've got three tufts in. We got one here, one here, one here. So what we would do is take something like our binder and we would drop it to where it will flow into the tufts base. And it will eventually dry in one piece. What do y'all think? Well, I just got a dam that looks pretty nice in my ear. Uh, what do y'all think about that in chat? Actually, let's put another tough right here. I think it looked kind of cool. So you can get these Army Painter. Other companies make them too. They're easy to make if you have the equipment for it. I've made my own static grass applicator. Um, you can buy static grass fairly cheap. Uh, one of our hobby hacks will be how to make static grass. Um, I've just got to go get the stuff. Um, we'll probably do that in the next two weeks or so. Um, but show y'all how to do that. I think y'all have a blast making the stuff. So, there you go. There's a really cool, fancy-looking base. Um, we can also wash it down with our brown um, wash as well. Um, if if I did, What I could do also, this is kind of a cool trick as well, is once I coat it with my um, varnish, I can come back with the realistic water and in some of these deep recesses put a drop of the water in there and it will actually look like it's um, got like wetness in between those. And what I would do around here on the edges here is the flat part of the edge will get painted black. But I would take a mud brown and fill all that in right there. And But that would be kind of a, you know, from this point you can go different ways. Like you could make it swampy looking by using the water effects. Um, or you can add a little bit more drier colors to it and make it more like cracked earth. You can take this as well, and the way I filled it in with the sand, um, you could paint all this hard black, and then, uh, how we got 10 minutes left? Dang it. Okay. Um, you can paint it hard black, and then, um, come in and fill all this in with yellow. Daniel, we don't have enough time. Yes, we do. Okay. Let's do this real quick. Okay. Super glue, super glue, super glue. Where you at? Super glue, super glue. There you go. Okay, I'm going to coat this real quick. Yeah. 
and you want to separate these a little bit more than I had them beforehand. Sand. Let's see how quickly I can pull this off. Okay. Let's sand this base. We got sand on this base here. It's loose sand. So, this is when we come in with the super glue. And this is something you could do with crackle paint as well. Black crackle paint. Let's let that try to dry up for a second. Soak, soak in, soak in. I know you want to. Uh, let's put our tip on here. Okay, my super glue is starting to dry up. Oh, come on. Moving the sand here a little bit. Okay. Our friend, Mr. Accelerant. a minute okay go super glue go I'll be posting some of these up after we get them done because I know I ain't gonna have them all looking pretty just yet okay let's paint this black a little bit more time I could probably do it better but I just want to get y'all the general idea of what we're doing here Straight black. So, now if those pieces are painted black, this is the part that's not going to work because it's not dry yet. Da, 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 da. Oh. Maybe. <laughs> Sorry, get the Reaper paints out here. Yeah. 
Okay. So we'll take the red. This is not the brightest red. Okay. We're just trying to get a general effect here. I'm going to take some of this yellow. And see, I'm going to send this red, make us an orange. Come in here. Orange. More in the center. Heck, where that's still mostly wet, I just have to mix it on the model. Got something stuck to the tip of my brush, I hate that. Ugh. Let's see what I'm doing though is I'm making a lava base. So and then you just keep getting brighter and brighter in the center. So like then I would take a little bit of white, mix it in. Drop here. The closer to the the, the center you want it wider then you want it closer to the rock you would want it um, more red and then you would hit this edging with a dry brush of gray but that's the basics of creating a lava base right there is you can use it with cork you can use it with just paint crackle paint uh, and make it so look at that the basics of a lava base within five minutes. I got it. 10 o'clock. That's it, guys. Hope you all had fun. Remember my Patreon. If you want to get in here and chit-chat with us while we paint and have fun and all these other wonderful things, you have a great night.